friends, it's Jeannie. Thanks for joining me here today. I'll be sharing these two cards which came out of a two for one technique. I will be using the Not Too Shabby Be Mermazing and Hugs and Fishes stamp set, which were both sets from the June box of the month and are available as standalone sets. I will be starting off with two different paper panels. One is Canson XL watercolor paper, and my second will be Nina Solar Cross 80 pound cardstock. For all my inking, I will be using Ink on 3's Fade Out ink, which is normally a ink used for no line coloring, but today I will be using it for a tone on tone technique as well as the ink for a subtle background. Because I am stamping on Canson XL watercolor paper, I am stamping quite a few times because of the texture that is on the paper. I wanted a a crisp image then I will be using my Nina Solar cardstock panel which is cut at A2 size. I had a piece of watercolor paper that was a little bit larger I just didn't cut it down and later I will cut it down when I put this card together. So for the Nina Solar Crest cardstock I am doing the same thing and using the same images and stamping it a couple of times using that Ink on 3 fade out ink. For this panel, I won't be doing any coloring at all, so it is just definitely for creating a subtle background. To finish off my background, I pulled out the bubbles from both sets. They have a variety of these little bubbles, and I will be filling up all the little areas of white space on my background. For the watercolor panel, I will be inking this up, and this will be my colorful element of the card. I am using Distress inks in Tumbled Glass, Broken China, Mermaid Lagoon, and Blueprint Sketch. Ink on 3's Fade Out ink is an interesting ink because it is used for no line coloring and it kind of absorbs the color you put on it. I've also discovered that you can use it for tone on tone ink blending and creating a background. So that's what I'm doing here. As I put ink colors on top of the stamped images, they kind of absorb that color and reflect the color that you're putting on top. You can't really see it with the lighter colors, but as we get to the darker colors, you start seeing it come out a little bit more. And I think it's really cool and it is very useful for a tone on tone technique. I tend to use Canson XL watercolor paper just because it picks it up a little bit better. I think with Nina Solar, you really have to work hard at getting that ink blending nice and smooth and you kind of lose the stamp images among that. So I recommend using Canson XL watercolor paper or Bristol Smooth for the tone on tone technique. For my Nina Solar cardstock, I use the ink as a subtle background. As I mentioned before, my watercolor panel was a little bit larger than the normal A2 size card, so I taped it right on top of each other because I wanted the pattern to be continuous. Once I trim down my watercolor panel to an A2 size, I'm actually going to cut this in half and I will have four different panels which will be continuous. Two of them will be continuous with each other to create one background and then the other two will create my second background. I thought that this would be fun to have that pop of color. I took the mermaid from the Be Mermazing stamp set and I am stamping it out twice because we are creating two cards and I'm using Ink on 3's Blackout Ink which is a really crisp black ink and then I will be stamping the sentiment on watercolor paper mainly because I will be ink blending on top of that to match the panel that we created earlier and I wanted it to pop. I had stamped the mermaid on Nina Solar cardstock because I will be using Copic markers to color her up. For the mermaid herself, she is really small and really adorable, but I have a tendency to be comfortable with three Copic markers for each area, so that's what I'm doing, even though you definitely can get away with using two Copic markers. For her face, I am going in with my darkest color and mapping out all the shade areas and you can see that I added a bit of dimension around her eyes and around her cheek bones and then I will go in with my mid-tone color blend that out a little bit leaving white highlights and then once I finish doing that I will also go in with my lightest color and color up the rest of the area. So it's kind of hard to see the face structure in this really small image so you definitely can use two Copic markers do the same thing and probably get away with it without having anything that was super noticeable of having my mid-tone. I would probably use my darkest color, which is a E04 and an E00, which is the lightest, and those blend together really well. 
For her hair and fins, I decided that I wanted to go for a pink kind of magenta look because I just really love blue and pink together. So I am going in with this dark red, which seems scary, but I really liked how it turned out because it just adds that dimension when you have a really dark color. And so I'm just mapping it out. It's helpful when images have those lines. So usually with those lines, I will place all my shadows where the artist has drawn those lines because that was the original intent. And it's super helpful instead of an empty image where you kind of have to map out your own shadows. So I really appreciate images that allow you to do that as well and just kind of cheat in a way. Then I will go in with this dark pink color and color up her hair following all those lines and just kind of building it up. I'm being very stingy with the darker colors because I really want the pink, the light pink colors to shine through. So once I do that, I will go in with my lighter pink colors and this image will look more pink than red. And I just love how it turns out. I had recently discovered this color combination with adding that darker red, which seems scary at first, but I am really excited by it. Sometimes I'm just so used to using the same Copic markers that I will just go to the same combinations and nothing really changes which is great because I don't have to get more Copic markers, but I do like to change things up a little bit and experiment. And when I do experiment and I really like a particular color, I'll keep going back to it. So I think that adding in that red is something that I probably will continue to keep going back to. I'm on my lightest color and as you can see there's a lot of white space left and that will be the highlight because this is the lightest pink color in this combination and it really just adds that highlight feature in the mermaid and I am so happy with the color pink that it came out to be. And definitely if you don't have all these colors you don't have to use them just use whatever you are comfortable with. So I went ahead and fussy cut those mermaids out. They were pretty easy to cut out. And for the sentiment, I just went in with my darkest colors, which were Blueprint Sketch and Mermaid Lagoon to go over the sentiments and I trimmed them out into small squares. I'm just double checking to make sure that the panels are continuous. Remember, we cut these two panels together so they should line up with each other. I'm going in with my first panel on the left-hand side and then I'll be using the fully white panel for the right hand side and it will be a continuous pattern on my card panel and then I will add the mermaid on foam tape because the watercolor paper is actually a little bit thicker than the Nina Solar cardstock and to balance out that thickness I'm just adding a bit of foam tape and popping her up. I'm using two different foam tapes because one is a little bit thicker than the other I have foam squares and foam tape. You definitely don't have to do that. It's fine if it's a little uneven, but I just had it on hand, so I decided to do that. And I added little foam tape areas in her tail because it is so small, but I didn't want those pieces to get stuck or anything either. Then I added the sentiments on the sides and I found these little embellishments in my stash. They look like water bubbles and they kind of match the colors of the ink blending. So I decided to pull those out and I'm just scattering it around because the white panel kind of looked plain because it's so subtle. Once I am happy with where the embellishments go, I will just add them on with liquid adhesive that dries clear so you won't see the glue underneath. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. That is it for today's cards. And as you can see, you can get two cards out of these panels. So I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys next time for another video. Bye!